This is a submarine that I went to. Guess what? You're probably going to a submarine also. This is part two to the SECF video that I had recorded previously. And I had a lot of people view it, comment it, and tell me, hey, thank you for making this video. I've been looking for a video exactly like this. A lot of people, a lot of people that view it said that they're going to SECF. I was never an instructor. So whatever you heard from your instructors, there might be some merit to it. But I was never an instructor. I don't really care what your opinion is about me, but I'm going to tell you my version of getting to the submarine after submarine school. I went through the SECF program, much like many of you. Some people were nukes, some people were nuke drops, whatever. Some people didn't get through SECF and ended up going to a different rate. Wherever that is, you are on your way to a submarine. Many people ask me the same questions. What's there to do on a submarine? Will I see my girlfriend while I'm in the submarine, etc.? Uh, I got news for you. Yes and no. So a lot of questions people ask me is what job will I get outside of the military? Don't worry about that. You're going to a submarine. You're going to get qualified. You're going to stand watch. You're going to develop thick skin. You're going to develop a really robust work ethic. And all your questions will be answered. So I'm going to cover part two of the SCCF video. The SCCF video was, you don't know anything, you signed up, you're going into submarine school, going through boot camp, etc. This video version will be the continuation of that. Now, you're going to leave submarine school or nuke school, you're going to go to your submarine. Now, however you decided to get to the submarine is irrelevant. You were either a class ranking structure where the highest priority went to the first student and then the second student, etc., etc., of who gets to choose orders. Other classes, you just get like random, random. You go here, you go here, you go here, you go here. For me, we decided at the very beginning, we're going to go through class rankings. Who's going to be the smartest student, second smartest student based on their average junior test scores. Those got first di first dibs, first picks or first part, whatever the hell you want to call it. Different people call it different things. Um, so I got to go to Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. That's it. Either your East Coast or your West Coast or Pacific I got to go to Hawaii and they didn't give me a chance what submarine to pick. I ended up going to the USS Greenville. Here's the irony. I wanted to go to Japan. That's why I joined the Navy. I ended up on the Greenville. Didn't go to Japan. Okay, so I'm going to look at some questions. So you're going to get to the submarine. You're going to adapt to the submarine culture. Every submarine command is different. Every command has their own nuances and their own social norms. A lot of people who have a hard time adapting, they want the culture to change for them. It's not going to happen. You are not going to change the culture for yourself. What you can do is adapt to their norms. Learn their culture. They're going to be very um, thorough with you in your ability to adapt. And if you are having a hard time, they are going to zero in on you and make sure that if you're going to snap or you're going to break, that they do it to you while it's safe for them, meaning they could get you off the submarine, um, they'll get you that, whatever it is you need to get, like you talk to the chaplain if you need to talk to the chaplain, you talk to the medical department representative, which is doc, you get referred to a social worker or a caseworker, etc. Get your shit squared away. They're gonna find a problem with you and they're gonna make you go seek help. Or if you're smart, you're gonna be proactive, you're gonna seek help for yourself before something happens. I did it. Resources are there. No shame in it. Other people are going to be jealous that you have time off the boat. Doesn't matter. You get corrected, you come back and you are still a performer. I wish I'd have known this earlier. But eh, eventually I got around to it. You stay out of trouble and then you're going to be fine. Now, when you get to your submarine, they're going to call you a nub. It stands for a non-useful body. It's what they say, Big Navy says it's hazing, it's derogatory, whatever. They're going to call you a non-useful body because you're not qualified. You don't know how to isolate systems. You don't know how to make things safe. You don't know how to prevent danger. You're going to learn all of that. It'll be part of your damage control qualifications, which is the most important thing. If you only know damage control, you're already more than halfway there. Damage control is very, very important. It will keep people safe. So you're going to get qualified to stand guard watch. You're going to be qualified to shoot a weapon. You're going to stand the watch. You're going to be an access point. You're going to be a control access point, And you will be very good at your job. 
you're going to be qualified by a weapons officer and they will tell you what you need to do in order to stand the watch it's very important you get qualified fast and you stand watch don't take your time do it fast you will be a good impression on your peers and they will be okay this guy is a good performer he's definitely serious about it and they're going to ease up on you they're going to move on to the next person it, it happens it, they're going to look at you first because you're brand new and fuel you out to move on to the next person who comes in you will be given a stack of qualification cards these cards are going to be which would include your watch standing import at sea watch standing could include driving the boat phenometer um, radar operator plot um, land tech of the watch now if you're in the weapon side you're going to be sonar or you're going to be fire control whatever if you're in machinist mate you're going to be auxiliary man of the watch if you're torpedo room torpedo room watch if you're land tech or IT, ITS, you're going to be doing that. If you're radio, you're going to be in the radio room doing what radio men do, communications. Now, you're going to be also working on your fish. You're going to have an okay amount of sleep, but it's in your best interest to get your qualifications done. Don't slack on them. Once you get on your delinquent list, it's really hard to come off. Stay ahead of your qualifications. People will leave you alone. Fortunately for a lot of people, and such as myself, you're granted the permission and the right to wash dishes. You're going to be what they call scullery duty or a crank or an FSA, as they call in the politically correct Navy. FSA is food service assistant. Ironically, you're not allowed to touch food. You're allowed to touch dirty dishes and make them clean. Be very good at it. Once that they see you know how you do your job, wash dishes, you earn the respect of the crew. Everyone does it. There are very, very, very few exceptions. Um, the dock did not have to crank. Nukes, E5, staff pickup had a crank. It was fine. Did no complaints. I cranked on Christmas Day and New Year's Day and all major holidays. And I was happy to do it. Cranked on a Friday. Now you get really tight with the galley watch captain and his team of culinary specialists. And what happens is you do the meals during the day. And if you're lucky, you get to do dinner on Friday. You go out in town, drink a couple of beers with your mates, come back, do breakfast, you know, no sleep. And uh, lather, rinse, repeat. It's fun. You build a really good team. And you get to eat first. And if you're fortunate, you get to eat some cookies with the galley watch captain and his, and his cronies or his cohorts. And it's fun. It's good times. Now, I wanted to stay as an FSA because I had 12 hours off to do anything which was including my qualifications. I got ahead, I stayed ahead, and I used that to my advantage. I requested that I stay on the galley watch captain's team the longer time than others because I would be able to take advantage of that off time. Now I got moved to be the trash uh, compactor operator, TDU ops. And what that include is all the trash of the submarine gets put in the space. It's up to you to compact it into a tiny can and stow it. Now, fortunate for me, I knew the space was going to be my space for a while. I cleaned it. I took the TDU canister apart, barrel apart, hydraulics isolated, everything, field day that thing without even being told. I got on my hands and knees, scrubbed that thing so clean so you could eat off of it. Didn't stink. I was going to be there 12 hours, so I wanted to make it very pleasant for me. Once I got my fish, I was only woken up to compact trash, and that was it. They'd wake me up, compact trash for two hours, two and a half, three hours. Once that was done, I would field day it. And I would go back into the shower. I got a shower before you go into the rack. And then I got to sleep for 12 more hours until the trash piled up again. It was very easy. Not a problem. So we talked about life as a nub. We're going to talk about the UCMJ. Stay out of trouble. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink if you're under 21 and don't fight out in town. That's it. Stay out of trouble. You'll be fine. Um, so you're going to, you know, question your decision a couple times when you're on the submarine underwater, underway on nuclear power. You sign your name on the dotted line. Maybe you did it biometrically with your thumbprint, but no one forced you to do it. You have to be there and you have to just see it through to the finish line. Now you're going to be on the submarine for a while, a couple years, hopefully. Hopefully you see it to the end of your contract. You made the decision to join the submarine force. 
Now, very few people make it this far. Very few people get through SCCF. Very few people get through submarine school. You're fortunate. You got through submarine school. Now you're on a submarine. You're out to sea underwater. Once in a lifetime experience. Hold your head up high. You're given the opportunity to earn your dolphins. Once you earn your dolphins, they stay with you for life. Now, if you get submarine disqual, that's 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 another problem. That's not my problem. That's your problem. So one of the things that I did a lot of was clean. Now I learned if I am out of sight, I am out of mind. So I learned how to crawl into tiny nooks and crannies and confined spaces and take a bucket and a sponge and soapy water with me. And I was left alone. Sometimes you'll find a warm area to clean that's dark and you could lay out, don't sleep, but make sure that someone's, you know, keeping an eye out for you. If uh, you hear your name, make yourself present ASAP. I've had my name called on the general announcement a couple times, an engineering circuit a couple times, and I've always manifested myself to the supervisor that asked for me. It's funny. It happens. They thought I was not there, but I was there. That's how good I am at cleaning. Some people like to hide. But if you're cleaning and you're out of sight, you know, it's not hiding, right? Someone asked me if their girlfriend will be able to visit them. Now, when you get to the boat, you're going to be in the barracks room. You're going to be escorting people on base. Um, Some rules, a little bit wishy-washy. That's up to you to figure out. Um, Be bold. Stick to your decisions. Also know the rules and also know the consequences for breaking those rules. Observe your culture and your community. Ask questions to the right people, build your circle of trust, and along with other nubs, you guys work together and get your qualifications done. Share your notes, point each other out into different directions of like, okay, you do this, I do this part, and then we'll exchange notes and we'll tackle these things together, make it easy on ourselves. Build yourself a team. The people you show up to the boat with, you will be with for those years to come. Make friends. Make friends with other nubs. And also, it doesn't hurt to be a little bit of a mentor sometimes. Seek mentorship is also a good thing. You guys are all going to face the same struggle. These are not a struggle. This is a test to see if you have what it takes to stay on the submarine. Yeah, you got to be sent to a submarine. Now it's up to you to work hard and stay on this submarine. But guess what? Once you're out, you will never, ever have to struggle for anything ever again. The job market is very plentiful. And they're actively seeking veterans. Not only are they actively seeking veterans, once they find out you've been on the submarine and you've gotten your dolphins, you're pretty much a guaranteed hire wherever you go. You get to be picky, but you need to earn the right to be picky. And the way you do that is by earning your dolphins. Earning your dolphins by adapting to the culture in that submarine, doing a great job, being senior in rank, qualifying as much watch stations as you're allowed to qualify, your resume with dolphins turns into gold for anyone who finds that in their inbox. Once you've applied to many jobs out there. Personally, I work with robots. Here's my picture. So what do I do? I work with robots. Robots build rockets. These rockets will go out to outer space and they will do great things. Companies out there actively seek people that are hard workers, that are out the box thinkers, worked under tight pressure, tight deadlines, and just get stuff done. What I have figured out the hard way is that I have very high demanding of perfection. It's not really achievable, but to get really close to it is something that not many people have that drive for. Like just self-aware of like quality of work, attention to detail, being able to work in a team and just get stuff done. Even if there's high tension, if there's personality differences, you work together somehow. People have been surprised at the team building that I've done in my past jobs which also include working with robots, startups, long hours, doesn't bother me. You're going to love coffee. You're going to have a pride of doing a hard job. You'll be fine. You're going to be fine. It's scary, but guess what? Do it once. You do it right. That's the only time you need to do it. If you stay in, I didn't say, if you stay in, you get to the second submarine, it'd be easier. There's no boat like your first boat. There's no struggle like your first struggle. And you will only be enough once. Yes, you're allowed to have visitors. You are allowed to take time off. You are allowed to take weekends off. So it's just like a regular job. You have day hours. And yeah, you'll stand guard watch. And that's cool. Everyone does it. So there's no exceptions. Um, Just do good at it. Qualify below deck so that way you're protected from the elements. So when it rains, you don't have to stand out there. 
Uh, there's tents and you can stand under the tents, but you're constantly roving, you will get wet. But as a below decks watch, overseas on deployment, that's the best watch to stand in port. You will be inside the air conditioned environment, it's dry, and sometimes there's people to talk to, and it's easier than staying topside. Hot sun, elements, all that fun stuff. Snow, yeah, not about it. Yeah, hopefully uh, I didn't monologue too much. I wanted to point you guys in the right direction for success as a nub. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. I'm going to be releasing another video that's going to be how to be a civilian after being in the military, which is pretty cool. I had to live that struggle, and I have some notes to give you. And if it helps you, that's cool. Let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe, whatever you want to do. I'm a veteran. I got out as an electronic technician second class, what they call ETV2, submarine qualified, and I did a great job. Five years, USS Greenville was a cool submarine. Uh, I would definitely go back there again. Unfortunately, um, maybe I would be a different rank because, you know, I've been out for so long, but whatever. It's cool. I definitely earned that rank real quick just by what I already know. So, yeah, you know, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you watched to the very end. Um, I hope that I got all your questions. Uh, gain confidence as a nub and a sub. Adapt culture. Gain the trust and get fish. That's my closing statement.